Today, we're talking Elite Series ECUs or Nexus Series ECUs, and we're talking oscilloscopes. So what is an oscilloscope? Well, for our purposes here, an oscilloscope is a device that measures a voltage coming into our engine management system and shows you what that voltage is, but at a really, really high speed. For measuring very specifically things like uh, crank sensors and cam sensor signals, a lot of the times those signals are happening so quickly that a normal multimeter or a LED test light doesn't really give us much information. Whereas when we click on our oscilloscope here, with this demonstration, I can show you a little bit easier what I'm talking about here. If we look across here at our screen, we've got this yellow squiggle. It goes up, goes down, goes up, and goes down. This is a representation of our engine simulator here of what's going on with our crank trigger signal coming in. Down below, on this pink line down here, we've got one pulse, two pulses, three pulses, that's coming in as our cam synchronization event or our home signal. Now, if I have a look through here, I can see that I've got one cam pulse coming in. If I drag this little button right up over the top here. Okay, so now I can see a cam signal occurring. I'll move that down a little bit just so we can see. Cam signal occurring. Then I can see this trigger system is a standard full cycle trigger signal. That means that I'm gonna get eight trigger pulses in and I'm going to get one cam pulse in per engine cycle. So here's my cam pulse, one, then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trigger events, then I get my home event coming in again. Then I'll have eight, one, eight, one, over and over and over again as the engine's running. If I rev the engine up, so I'm going to increase the RPM up to say 4,000 RPM now, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cam pulses there, or in total, this would be seven engine revolutions in total. If I bring this right back down, now we'll explain the other teeth that are sitting there. So if I move this down here across those ones, that top one there, is representing the actual trigger voltage coming into the engine management system. That might be what we call a Hall effect or a digital signal like the one that's there, or that might be an analog or a reluctor style signal that's coming in. That next blue line here, the trigger input state. Once that signal has come in, it goes through all our conditioning circuits, then it gets spat out straight into the microprocessor that's in the engine management system, as this trigger input state. So the conditioned signal that goes directly into the microprocessor. We can look at those two channels and make sure that for every trigger tooth, there's a conditioned input state going into the microprocessor. And that's really important to make sure that any reluctor signal or any digital signal or Hall effect signal coming into the engine management system is getting interpreted correctly by the trigger circuit, then spat out to the microprocessor so that it can use that information to determine engine RPM and engine position. These are the two most important sensors in the whole setup. Without these, the thing simply doesn't run. So once you open the scope, the default map is gonna be configured like this because the trigger input and the home input are the two most valuable things that we look at with the oscilloscope. They help us to determine that the trigger system is configured correctly. They help us to determine that we have the right number of teeth on the crankshaft and the camshaft sensor. Uh, in the tech department, this is probably one of the biggest problems that we have when an engine doesn't run. We don't really know why. So we would use the oscilloscope to measure exactly how many teeth are on the crankshaft and the camshaft. Then we would determine that we've got the right trigger system set up for that particular oscilloscope pattern. But we might find something like we're expecting to see say uh, eight teeth every crank revolution when in actual fact we might see that we've only got seven or we might have 11 or we might have uh, 36. So it's really important here to measure this correctly and make sure that we line up the number of teeth here with our trigger pattern. Now let's do a quick run through of all of the buttons and the dials on this page. So we've got our four channels down the right hand side. So we can select from a huge number of channels. Um, obviously there's a lot of channels that you would not use the oscilloscope for. So say for example, for a, a coolant temperature sensor, for example, an analog voltage that moves really, really slowly 
you're much better off looking at a voltage like that with a number display um, in, the, in the normal tuning software. So this is more for all of the high speed stuff. Uh, we've got our scale, so the voltage per division. So that's along these little table axes here. So if we cruise on further down, we've got our Y offsets. So all that's doing here, I'm just gonna grab channel one. I know that channel one is the yellow channel because it tells me down here. I can turn that on and off, by the way, if I just click that off and back on again. You might wanna do that sometimes to really narrow down on one particular signal. So I could just flick all of the other pages off so that I can only look at just the trigger signal and I've just turned off the home signal input just for the time being, just so I can see what's going on. I'll flick them back on again. So of the Y offsets, we can move those up and down. We might wanna line them up against the top of each number or over the top of a, a home position or a cam position, for example, to make sure that as we're, as we're revving the engine up, that we don't have slap in the timing belt or timing chain or something like that where we end up with what we call an edge swapping situation where one of the edges across here lines up right on top of one of the other edges. Uh, doesn't really happen in factory applications, but when we're fitting custom trigger types or building custom engines, sometimes that does happen and it's really nice to be able to look here to avoid those problems before we actually start the engine, turn the fuel on and, and get the thing running. Uh, one of the points I would like to make here, this is a display. This is not changing the tune of the engine at all in any case. You're displaying all of these voltages coming in on these pages. Anything that you move in this page, you are not changing the tune up in the engine in any way. If I come down to this next one, trigger channel. So at the moment, I've got it set up on engine angle and to trigger when the angle of the engine is at one degree. You could choose to get the oscilloscope to start triggering based on event, like a, a trigger event, or you might wanna say, start triggering at uh, 6,000 RPM, 7,000 RPM. You can use a range of different triggering channels in order to capture the data that you need. So if you have a misfire, at a high RPM misfire, you might wanna try and get the system to log when the trigger error starts incrementing or when we're at a very specific engine RPM where you know that there might be a problem. We can then look at that scope trace. We can have a look at what the trigger and what the, the home signal are doing, then decide whether that's the problem or whether we start to look elsewhere. The trigger mode. Okay, so the whole bunch of settings in here, and this is basically asking, when do you want the oscilloscope to take a sample of that data? Do you want it to happen when there's a rising edge, when there's a falling edge, do you want it to keep on sampling over and over again? Or do you want to just take one snapshot when that enabling condition occurs. It's really up to you and it really depends on each sort of circumstance. Uh, I try and use auto and the edge for me personally, doesn't matter too much. Uh, we normally would try and trigger off the consistent edge. On my ECU tester, both edges are consistent, so not too important, but case by case is, is a little bit of the go there. Uh, if you're trying to find a specific problem and trying to get a snapshot of something happening, Typically a single snapshot is the way to go so that once a condition is met, you'll get one snapshot and it won't then keep sampling and get rid of the original data. The trigger threshold. So like I said before, we're triggering here off engine angle and it's triggering when the engine angle gets to one degree. I can also come down here as well and just keep on pressing the force trigger button. It's basically the same thing as what's happening with our auto. So you can see at the moment how the signal is kind of just wobbling around just a little bit because we keep getting live data all the time. If I come down here and go for a single event, force it to trigger, that's it. I just took one snapshot and that's it. I can now move my engine up and down, or well my engine RPM I should say, up and down. I can do whatever I want, that's it. And I've just got my one live snapshot. I could hit it again and I'll get another snapshot and there we go. So that's sort of the way that that force triggering system is working. If I come down even further here, trigger horizontal position. All this is doing is that when that trigger threshold occurs at say one degree of engine angle, this is where that snapshot will start from. So if I look along the bottom of the screen there where that T occurs, 
So I might put that all the way over to the left there and I know that at that position there, that will be in, in my case here, one degree of engine angle. Then it would come up and 360 degrees would be halfway through here, 720 degrees, then it would repeat. All the way down the bottom here, time base. So this is our X axis or along the bottom of the screen. Of these little boxes that are drawn in the background here, each little box is 20 milliseconds long. 20 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. It's a thousand milliseconds in one second. So 20 milliseconds is not, <laughs> not a very large amount of time. Uh, we would normally be sort of looking at a, a sample space of maybe 50 milliseconds, somewhere around there under cranking speed in order to get a good snapshot of exactly what's happening. Uh, as the RPM starts to increase, we need to sample faster and faster in order to get a better snapshot of what's going on because obviously as the RPM increases, we get so many more samples per second. Show time cursors. If I turn that one on, this is probably getting a little bit carried away, but what's going on here, if I go through and I'll set that time cursor right there, then I'll slide this other one across to right there. So that is the falling edge of both of a home signal. So that's a full engine cycle from there to there. If I look over here, it tells us time between those cursors is 42.4 milliseconds. So I know that at this RPM, it's taking 42.4 milliseconds for the camshaft to do one full rotation. Why does that matter? Well, to most people, it probably doesn't matter at all. But if we're trying to do some fault finding stuff, sometimes being able to measure between these points can be really handy um, and can point out some really, really strange problems that otherwise we would just be stabbing in the dark. Last but not least, there's a button down here, start logging to PC. If I click that, it's gonna start logging that trace view. What I'll do, I'll flick this back to auto. I'll press run, so that's moving along. That's logging to the PC there, I'll stop it. Then give it a sec to get it together. We'll go up here to our playback. There we go. And there's our PC log. So we can open that in the normal data log viewer software as well and get a more broad picture of what's happening. Righto, well that's the end of this very brief overview of the oscilloscope platform using the Elite NSP software, available on the Nexus, available on the Elite Series ECU that's had the Nexus firmware update. I've just done it on the trigger and the home signal. I'm sure you guys will come up with a thousand different ways to use this thing on your car to diagnose the trigger system or you might even end up using it to diagnose something completely different that's got nothing to do with your car. It's an oscilloscope. As always, thanks very much for watching till the end. My name's Scott, catch you next time.